My name is Jamie McGonigal. I'm here uh, with We Act Radio on the steps of the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court Palace, if you will. Uh, and we just found out that Prop 8 is, uh, has not been found unconstitutional so much as has been uh, remanded back to the lower courts based on the fact that the people who were defending Proposition 8 did not have the right to defend it. Uh, it was a private organization that felt they represented uh, the people who voted for Proposition 8 in the first place uh, to pass the anti-gay law. Uh, it's, we're, we're all a little confused just simply because uh, it, it still it still creates a situation in this country where uh, gay people are not equal. We're about far from equal as you can get. Uh, and we, uh, at least with the Defense of Marriage Act being struck down, or Section 3 of the Defense of Marriage Act, uh, people who are married legally, including myself, uh, now can experience full federal equality uh, as, far as, as far as our marriage goes. So I can now file joint tax returns with my husband and pay more. Woohoo! Uh, so we're actually excited about that because we are seen as equals under federal law. Uh, federal workers now will have spousal benefits. Um, all right, awesome. We are very excited to be uh, to have joining us Rep. Dan Kildee from Massachusetts, Michigan. Michigan. Oh, they wrote Although MA. Massachusetts is a great state. Michigan, I'm so sorry. That's all right. No, I, no I'm not sorry. Michigan. Michigan's lovely. I like yes. it there. How are you? Doing great. It's a pretty great day, huh? It's history. Yeah. And yeah, I just had to be here. I uh, was. Uh, part of the part of the case that we filed, and so I'm really excited about this. Long walk, hey? <laughs> yeah, a long walk indeed. In a this heat walk. in D.C., right. it's, it is a long, it is a long, long walk, walk to this day, if it's a metaphor. So, so uh, Defense of Marriage Act has been found unconstitutional, or Section Three. Right. Uh, how are we feeling about that, especially as as it um, as it. Uh, might affect the current immigration uh, discussion that you're having over well, there. Well, I think that's a good sign. I mean, this, this, I think, overall is that the court, in one big step and maybe in a couple of small steps, is recognizing equality finally. Right. Uh, it's been a long time coming. So as we move forward on all sorts of issues, immigration being one, we're going to have to keep in mind that finally the Supreme Court recognizes equality. And the, the brief that you wrote, uh, why did you do that? Why did you jump in uh, feet first with, with something like that? Well, I'm a new member. I've been here uh, <laughs> six months, and I just thought, my gosh, if there is anything that any federal representative ought to stand for, it's equality. We, we um, you know, we recognize... You think. <laughs> you would think. You would think. And, and to me, uh, it's, it's a fundamental question. It's not anything that ought to be debated or nuanced. It's a fundamental right, and it's just uh, it's an exciting day. All right, and you're from Michigan, a state which does not currently recognize right. marriage equality. What's being done on the ground there to, to get that off well, the ground? Well, we have an entirely Republican state government. Oops. But I think, you know, even though um, that's the case, if you think back to the history of the civil rights movement itself, 40 or 50 years ago, lots of folks did not recognize rights based on race. Right. But now it's universally more uh, in, uh, aligned with American thinking. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the case now, and hopefully these generations move faster. Do you think in Michigan it's going to move forward I anytime so. soon? I hope so. So this okay. will help. All this right. Will yeah. Help. Certainly. Certainly. Great. I think uh, maybe the three states who just passed it can, uh, maybe helped help the decision around here. I hope so. Um, so what's next for you over there? Well, now we're going to go back and you know begin to fight the battle to preserve the SNAP benefits and the Farm Bill and work to implement the Affordable Care Act. Obviously, there's a lot going on right now, but. You know, this this is the news of the year. As it's far as I'm it's the news of the year. I also think yesterday's news was was pretty newsworthy yeah, as far yeah. as the Voting Rights Act goes. It now, is. Uh, we've had a, a couple of discussions here today about uh, accessibility to the court and and the fact that so much of our country's future is decided behind closed doors, right in the building behind us. Um, do you have any opinion on that? You, as far as you know, letting cameras into the court, uh, what what we should and should not know about what's going on behind closed doors? There? I think I think the presumption ought to be that government operates better in the sunshine. Right. And. Uh, Obviously, the court has certain prerogatives that it tries to protect, but I think as a rule, what we've seen is when government operates in the bright light of public opinion, it does the right thing. So, awesome. Thanks very much for joining us, you. Congressman. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. Have a great day. All right. Good? Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Pleasure. Thank you. So here we are at We Act Radio on the steps of the Supreme Court where people are dispersing because apparently decisions did come down. <laughs> and uh, the so-called Defense of Marriage Act, Section 3 of the Defense of Marriage Act, uh, was struck down as unconstitutional. Proposition 8 was remanded to the lower courts, which means that Californians will again be able to be married. Uh, I'm not sure when, but hopefully very soon. Uh, it's still a bit of a confusing uh, finding just because it was not found unconstitutional. Um, so these, these laws, it was 
wasn't about animus. It was only about the fact that the people who were defending Proposition 8 in court didn't technically have the right to defend it, which confuses me in my little lizard brain uh, simply because um, you would think if they granted the case in the first place, they knew who, were gonna, who was going to be defending it. Uh, so that, that would be my question, which of course we'll never have answered because we can't actually know anything about what happens behind those doors. Yay, we act radio. Uh, my name is Jamie McGonigal. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at McBenefit, M-C-B-E-N-E-F-I-T. Uh, you can follow We Act Radio at We Act Radio. There's a lot more simpler, simple than mine, uh, just because my last name's kind of hard to spell. Anyway, so here we are, steps of the Supreme Court. Uh, Defense of Marriage Act has been found unconstitutional. Prop 8 is no more, uh, apparently for now, at the very least.